In today's video, I want to show you how to uh, do a filter with date ranges and uh, using some great enhancements they've made in 2007 and 2010 and Excel 2013. Uh, here's a list of data. This happens to be, uh, let's say, flights. And uh, we have the flight date and all the information about the flight. Uh, now, uh, of course, with the filter, it's very important that the field names are on the first row. And then if you notice, Every row after that is a different record or a different transaction. Each column is a different field. Also notice how it's one continuous block of data all the way down. And also to make the filter work properly, you don't want to have any blank cells in the whole range. Now notice the first column has, uh, let's say, the date of their flight. And some are in the past, some are in the future. Let me show you how to start to do filters with uh, date ranges. So let's turn the filter on first. I'll pick on data, then I'll pick on filter. And you can see that each column has a pull down. Uh, now other videos will talk about how to do filters with other fields, but let's talk about the date field. So uh, they made some great enhancements in 2007 and 2010 with this. I'm gonna click on the pull down for the flight date. And notice how you have something that's called a date filter. And now look, you have all these built-in date ranges. So let me see if I have any tomorrow. Now it's going to base uh, these date ranges on your computer system clock. So if I pick on tomorrow, it's looking for anything from January 20th. And I don't have any, any of those. But let's go back to date filter and then go back to today. I do have some for January 19th. Uh, as you can see down here, that's my computer clock. That's when I recorded the video, January 19th. Uh, let's try that again. I'm going to click on that. Let's say date filter and let's say yesterday, which would be January 18th. And I have a few of those. So we'll pick, uh, let's go through some of these other ones. So next week, I do have a couple for next week. I do have a couple for this week. And again, it's based on all these ranges on the uh, computer system clock and then the dates that, that it's looking at. I have some for last week. Let's try for next month and this month and uh, last month. All right, so that would be December of 2013. That's correct. Uh, so notice how we also can do the quarter. Next quarter, I have some records. Then, of course, we can try this quarter. And then we have next uh, last quarter. It's going to be the th uh, fourth quarter of 2013. Then, of course, we could do it by next year. I don't think I have any for next year in this data set. And then here I have this year. That'll be the entire calendar year. And then you can see I have records here from January and, and um, all the way up to May even, right? Uh, anything that would be happening this year. Then I have last year, that would be the entire calendar year. Here's a uh, nice one over here. It's called year to date. So that'll go from January 1st up to the current date, whatever that might be. Uh, now this is January 19th. So you're seeing I have the ones from January, but that would be, you know, the January 1st to the current, uh, to the current date. Now there's all those ones. Now check this out. There's even more than that. If you pick on all dates in this period, then now if I pick on quarter one, It'll show me everything for any year that was in the first quarter of the year. So let's see if I have any 2013s in there. Not in, in that particular one. But if I go back there and pick on date filter, I think if I went to um, all dates in this period and I tried the fourth quarter, you can see that would see 2013. So when you pick something like that, let me try that again. If I pick on date filter and then all dates in this period, where it says quarter one, two, three, or four, that would be the first quarter of any year or the second quarter of any year. And then over here where it says January, that would be January of any year. All right, so you can try something like that. Now, if you wanted a specific date range, you can do that as well. I'm gonna click on that pull down and we'll go back to date filter. And what you do is you say uh, equals a specific date. If you, let, if you want just one date, you can say before a date after a date or between two dates. So uh, let's, let's even try that. I'll pick on between. And in this case, I'll say 
1 slash 5 slash 2014 and 1 slash 22 slash 2014. So I like the fact that you can do any kind of date range like that as well. And then you can see it really did uh, give you those records that meet the criteria. So when you turn the filter on, if you have a field that's a date field, you can click on that pull down, you pick on date filter, then you can either do specific date ranges up here, but I love the fact that they have all these built in date ranges as well. And then also you have all dates in this period, which will show you like January from any year or February from any year. And uh, I think these are great ways to do filters with date ranges in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to turn the filter off by just picking on the word filter. Now I have all the records back again.